I think T1 just just lock the Azir. Uh, yeah. I think when Azir is strong, Faker will just do this. We've seen this in the past like year and a half happen a lot where it's like, okay, well Azir is open, we'll just stick him on it. Consistently high priority. So now over the side of KT, I think uh, you just why don't you just lock Smolder Senna and just say your move. They haven't really been leaning towards the center. They've been going this for next and Sedge consistently, uh, but there is the threat of that Olaf. But to be fair, last time the Olaf was picked in second rotation, they will let it through to second rotation. My question for T1 is, how heavily do you prioritize the Lilia, or do you just take Senna Olaf right now? Yeah. The Olaf did great in the top lane matchup against the Renekton. If you leave it to second rotation, it's going to ban 100%. The Aatrox didn't fit the bill. If you're going to make the Senna thing work, I think Olaf Senna here would be good, but they want to prioritize the Lilia for Ona, and they will lean on that instead. So the question is, do they still go for the Senna, knowing that the Olaf is off the cards? The answer is probably, but we'll have to see what they can come up with uh, yeah. as a solution to the lack of that. So Lilia is going to be locked in, and then, I mean, if we're just following game one uh, to the letter, it is just going to be center locked in, and then we move over to a Smolder pick. And I think that that's actually kind of likely to happen. I think if you drop the center, you're in oh. a little bit of trouble. But instead, it's going to be the Olaf, and that will be locked in just to make sure that Zayas can once again get that matchup towards the top side of the map. Yeah, because he... Vyga? He was doing well in the top matchup, so they want to secure that. Uh, I don't like the Vyga, because I think Vyga is a good pick into the Standable <laughs> ban away here. And do they just go Seraphine, or think, is it just MF? I think you leave support ca support counter picks from one port. Well, I wasn't thinking for support because Deft has done it already, oh. and it is another long range mage that they could play on the bottom side. Yeah, I mean, I guess they could in theory, um, but again, into the Olaf, the the CC is is limiting. Ah, that's um, a very good point. So I think the MF uh, pretty good. Uh, we've obviously seen the value of the the ult if you can get people to stay on it. The question is, what are they going to play support? They'll see what T1 pick up, though. We're going to see Jin from Boom. No, nope. oh. just the Varus, Varus last second. So we've seen the Varus rise up a bit in priority. Not too, too much great success, but the on-hit Varus did get some buffs a couple of patches ago that really allowed him to find his way in the meta. And the question is, what does Carrier play in this situation? I think a lot of supports would just pick an engage support. That would be the standard for probably 90% of our roster in the LCK, is you just pick like whoever you want out of like Rel or Alistair or Leona. I think you just uh, pick Rel, right? And I think he's probably just gonna pick the Rel. And now Beryl will pick Alistair, and because that is the theoretical counter, because she presses her button and then you press headbutt. Uh, but we did see that this was a catastrophic failure yesterday. Yep. Uh, B and K, they were like, haha, we will outthink you by picking the Alistair. You cannot pick Rel. And then they picked Rel and they won. Um, because Rel's really good. So that is what KT are going to do. This is a different story, right? Duro, very new support here in the LCK playing for B and K yesterday. This is Beryl, who was probably one of our best Alistairs in a really long time, in 2019, which was a really long time ago. Uh, and he has a lot of uh, a lot of practice on this champion, can certainly set up for a lot of these big team fights to allow BDD and Def to do as much damage as they would like. A lot of physical damage here on the side of KT, but when you have true damage, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, and small we get ready to jump onto the Rift, whoever wins here is going to be going to match point, see who it's going to be. All right, I feel like KT are getting less and less hinged as far as the fan chants are concerned. As they should be. Yep, I think it's only going to get louder from here. Yeah, I'm a little concerned. One thing is that if Zayas has a good top lane, well, he's, he's done well in this matchup in game one. If he has a good time top lane, you have the double threat of Ona Faker. And really, I think, you know, if Def doesn't get a good ult, you're really relying on BDD to carry these fights. So, you know, T1, once again, playing a composition with more threats, but uh, I feel like the Ziggs was more of a backup threat in game two than, than Def can be in this one. So maybe a bit of concerns about that. Just depend, obviously, how things play out. I wonder if we see KT try to make something happen in the top lane before... One thing to say, if they act now, it's an MF. She can get here pretty quickly as far as champions go. Yep. With a strut. 
Uh, but it's also Zayas with that TP, so actually, sorry, it's a 4v4 still, and KT feeling confident on that. It's perfect level 6. Yep, PDD also had control of the mid wave, so able to get here first. Oh, the steal! That was pretty sexy. T1, I think, can possibly even just move away from this, but you can see Carrier looking aggressive. That's a flash out from Beryl. Mum does a lot of damage to T1. But it is going to be just these two grubs that are going to be taken away. Another one, Gumiushi perhaps? No, not going to happen this uh, time. Yeah. As, yeah, Perf just going to walk up and stun the Varus. That's a crocodile. Yeah, uh, he's pretty scary. He does have Dominus up and available, Gumiushi, without the Chains of Corrupt. Possible dive avenue here as they're stacking up this wave. And they do have a lot of chain CC. Of course, Perfect will be able to just press Dominus well, and try to weather the storm, CC. but this is... Yeah, this is real, real dangerous. I see what you did there. The uh, ultimate has been precast, but there it is. I just don't know what he's going to be able to do here. He goes and has a nap, and that is going to be first blood going over to Ona. And meanwhile, underneath the turret here, Ragnarok has been popped, and Pyoshik has to flash. Deft, not quite able to grab it quickly enough, but still going to be able to lock down the kill. So both top laners are being treated to some top lane action. And uh, it is just going to be relatively even. T1, though, do come out ahead by picking up First Blood and a bit of extra added on farm and things like that. It must be Charles being a top laner. Oh, yeah. Play, honestly, <laughs> it's just so unfair. Um, obviously, both teams trading here. BDD will get that Deep count. Ghost, though. But yeah, it definitely felt like uh, T1 had a cleaner dive there. Now, they're looking for a redive here. Zayas doesn't quite have his ult yet. It's up very soon, though. Should be up by the time they're in position to dive. Owner could move down here, but he's got his rafters uh, to yeah. deal with. You know, there, uh, there is some killing, some camps to take down. The Ragnarok, like you were talking Carol about, still up now. and available. Let's uh, let's see whether this can work in a three v two. As there is the Ragnarok coming down, bowling ball avoided. As Beryl is just dead, that's the watch out eat from Ona, as he is going to get pushed back there momentarily. And that dive just straight up didn't work. Yeah, Beryl was pretty low HP before he ulted, so it just wasn't enough to keep him uh, healthy and also... Yeah, so his thing is that Zayas isn't on the map right now, but he could be heading topside. KT don't know, so they have to kind of respect the fact that they, they don't have information on how many members are going to be there. I also think with Ona being so strong, it's a bit of a cautious one, so they're just going to give up the grubs completely. Uh, and look instead towards the dragon. There's an ocean dragon, first of all. Uh, Does mean that that's not going to be the soul, which is good news. Yep, and also the, the ocean dragon is nearly dragon. It's pretty nice to sustain. It is 12 minutes, though, a bit after laning phase. Uh, but T1, no hesitation. You take dragon, okay, we're going to take this top lane tier 1 and get some first tower gold. Well, Deft, he can make it rain. That makes things a little bit annoying there for Ona to be able to catch up. And that is going to be that dragon taken down. But I think the trade here, not exactly fantastic for KT. Oh, you can see we're ballooning to above 2,000 gold the lead for T1 with not only first blood, but with now first brick on top of it. And this Herald could mean a, a mid-tier one for T1, which would be huge. Well, they are just going to take it. Let's see where they do put it down. Might actually just be uh, plonked into the mid lane immediately. As uh, Perfect and Zayas continuing to go at it here. See Perfect in a better position than he was in game number one, but I think not in as good of a position as, as he was in prior. As BDD wants to grab this cannon, will be able to do so, won't be able to stop the charge, but also Shelly's not really going to be able to get more than just a bit of damage onto this outer turret, so not the most consequential. Or everyone just get ready for the global taunt to work. Yeah, no half measures, it's, it's all or nothing. Do you yeah. see BDD pick up the Triforce? Uh, and he's going to make his way top just to clear out this way. He does have teleport, so he's the one that is allowed to do that. 24 it's a second seconds. Dragon, and then KT already have one, so if they're not feeling it, they can just give this up. Uh, and we see actually Pyoshik and Barrel moving up towards the top side of the map, so perhaps that might just be the game plan. Yeah. Is just trade the dragons and one apiece. Not really too much concern either way, whatever the soul is. Still going to be Faker taking a bottom out of turret as well, so that stacked onto everything is only going to continue to build T1's lead. Just a bit better than what KT have been able to do so far. Yeah, the side lane of pressure from the Azir and uh, Olaf did a pretty good job, and Zayas has TP ready. He's out of vision if they want to move, and I think KT just giving this one up. Yeah, it looks uh, like this one's not going to be something that they can actually fight for. We'll have a look at what soul it is going to be. Mountain soul to come in. It's a good one. Yep, either team going to be pretty happy about that. And now looking to try and apply some pressure towards that mid-tier one. Death could just ult the wave, so I don't think they're going to commit too hard. 
Yeah. Decides that he doesn't even want to do that. Just going to be able to clear up these as usual. As far as getting that Wombo down, finding these engages, finding the angles, allowing Zayas to run amok, or allowing Def to find that big ulti as Flash has to come out here as the Dominus has been popped. Perfect. Going down so incredibly low. Teleports coming in from everyone. His owner kind of creep blocked. And that is going to be somehow beaded. He picking up that kill. Uh, as a result, I think it kind of works out for KT in a weird way. Gets slowed, gets creep blocked, and now, oh, Baker, Baker is now. just dead. Okay, BDD okay. gonna flap away from the wall, and you can see that little grin on BDD's face. Feeling pretty good as a 2-0 is molded once again. This is kind of the problem, okay? Incremental advantages, you make two mistakes. It doesn't feel like they're massive mistakes, but now, oh BDD's God. also picking up this tower. He is God, just suddenly monster fed out of nowhere. You know, he got the goal. Gonna be a problem, and has continued to be throughout the series, even the game they lost. Oh, unfortunately, caught backing there a little bit. Did have vision, but it was just not enough. And the pincer maneuver going to be able to take him down. I, I, I guess you're not going to... Wow, oh. BDD started up the dragon. He's yeah. not a member of the Dragon Preservation Society. Or maybe he, he left. You know? Oh, yeah, maybe he had to leave because otherwise they were never going to be able to get the objective. Um, speaking of objectives, T1, they're just going to run over towards this Baron, and the Dragon will be taken, but can there be any responses? Beryl just dives in there! Alright, maybe that's the response. It's perfect, just uh, pokes his head in, and then uh, hops out again immediately, no, and KT have stopped the, the Baron! Yeah, they started to take some damage, and I think they were really conscious of the freshly level 16 BDD pressing oh, R on them in the pit and just one shot in them. A, a glass will smash or something and immediately everyone... Yep. Every, all the blood drains out of your face. Yeah. It's like, please tell me that's not one of the good ones. Oh dear. You know what? If the mum's that angry, it doesn't even matter if it's one of the good ones. Yeah, that's very true actually. You just have to be extremely careful. Speaking okay. about being careful, KT carefully trying to assess whether this Baron is going to be taken down. That is going to be some vision given over. BDD going to be the one to answer. The uh, Olaf, as uh, this farming is looking very satisfying, unless you're a T1 fan, as Pyoshik, this is good news for T1 fans. Pyoshik a little bit too far forward. Owner running very, very quickly. The bowling ball not quite going to connect, but Pyoshik going to be sent packing here for now. I believe does have his Warmogs completed, so we'll be able to get that health back relatively soon. Oh, not quite, actually. So. Oh, doesn't actually have it built up. Man, uh, been Beryl sitting on those components for a while. So they will get vision with the Make It Rain. Beryl actually has no wards and isn't able to recall. All right, he's going to have to flash to get himself out of the way. This one eats some Honey Fruit. Shattering Strike does not land, but Ona will be able to put him to sleep. Throws down the ulti, but had no health to back it up, and is still just able to walk it off. Never mind. Uh, yeah, he just lives, I guess. Those hoops now... were made for walking. As now, Pyoshik looking for a bit of an angle. T1, I think they found it, though, as Chains of Corruption going to have to be flashed. But that's not even the main thing. They have so much control around this barren area as Beryl running back, hoofing have, it as fast wards. as he can. Okay, but Death can get vision with Make It Rain. That's all they have right now. They're just going to have to go for it. Yeah, they're going to have to try and find an angle. Here's the Magnus Storm looking to try and keep them out of the pit. And Pyoshik still gets in, but it's not going to be good enough. Look at this AoE damage. is gigantic. But T1 are still just going to be able to get out of there with the purple buff in hand. It's a successful heist, but it still feels weirdly... You know, it, it worked. They got the Baron, but BDD is still so strong. It still doesn't feel like a true victory right now. They lose one member, they get away. They're going to lose a tower as well. Um, I, I feel like we're going to get to the point where T1 has like a 10,000 gold lead and they're inside KT's base. Everything is just gone into BDD, and it's understandable. He's now got four items, and they're all really good items. You know, this feels like this feels like an aiming small Oh, it really does. I feel like we watched this yesterday, and uh, aiming won a few of those games. So we can see that uh, building up the smolder is certainly something that does work. But now it's T1's forte. This is where they get to utilize their control of the map. And you can see, able to take down Inner Turret in the top lane. And it looks like Zayas will be able to protect this Siege minion as well, getting to work in this mid lane. This Four big. grubs paying off as well. Yeah, this is big, especially against a small, the Baron pressures can be tricky just because you can shred the wave so effectively. But T1 keep... As Beryl not going to get bold. And it is going to be a Gromp secure here. Look, this game... Oh, this oh. game is really just a test of how strong Smolder actually is. Can he carry yeah. from a 6k gold deficit? He's the fed one on the team. Everyone else is kind of just supporting cast. And, and it's like, there's been seven kills this game. Somehow, there's a 6,000 gold lead. As T1, they've started up the dragon. 
Vision now given over to KT as Teleport to come in. Let's see what can happen here as the Dragon does fly by, but it's just a little bit of damage onto Ona. They get the edge. Yoshik, they do manage to avoid the Chains of Corruption largely, but in goes Ona, he goes golden! Can they find the sleeps? They're looking for the flash out from BDD, but he's still gonna get taken down! And this is like what you were talking about, Orcs! Unfortunately, sometimes the little dragon just goes pop, and T1, they are just crushing KT with their wallets now. It's a little bit anticlimactic, but that is the way T1 are going to do it as they look to try and bring us to the next game with match point in hand. That's gonna be the clean ace. And T1, I think, just marching up the mid lane. A BD, he's gonna QSS his inventory, he just bought it now, but it's too late. Ends up getting CC'd, ends up going down, and that Smolder, who felt like such a threat, goes down with a whimper. T1, the incremental advantage is apparently we're enough to win them this game. They're gonna make a little bit more proactive play there on the side of KT. I was praising them for their patience, but sometimes it's too much.